So now with any further ado, we've got some uh, guests up here for Fry Fest. At this point, I'm going to introduce the moderator, uh, the, the uh, sports information director at the University of Iowa, Emeritus. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mr. Phil Hattie. Thank you all, and uh, this is kind of a special panel this week because all you see around you in this room, all you've seen around Iowa City, Coralville, North Liberty for the last month or so has been these beautiful hurricanes. And these folks here are representative and they are the, uh, I guess, creators of some of the hurricanes. I don't know exactly how many. Uh, some of you have done more than some one, some two, three, four. So uh, th their work has not gone unnoticed in the city. And before any of you leave today, you need to just make the full uh, half circle here around the room and look at all these hurricanes because it, it, it's just incredible. And I, I don't know how you folks yeah, I'm not even going there. I don't know how you do it, but it's uh, your work is uh, splendid and really appreciated. I'm going to introduce everybody here. Just uh, when I do introduce you, just wave your hand so they know exactly who your first, uh, you know, that you're going to be up. Okay, Kelsey Lynch. Okay, Kelsey, you got a, you got somebody with you there. So, okay, that's her son Jackson. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about Kelsey. She was born and raised in rural Johnson County, graduating from City High and the University of Iowa with a BA in Studio Art and Art Education, K-12 certificate. Kelsey is currently the K-4 to art teacher at West Liberty Community School District. She lives outside of West Branch with her husband Aaron and two sons, Carter and Jackson. And she has an Instagram account at TikTok that's Kelsey Lynch Art. She created Scratch Art Glass Turkey. Now, can you point where that's at? Just so they can, way in the back. Okay, that's where hers is at. Next, we have Stacy Jackson. Stacy's right there. She lives in Coralville with her husband and three kids. She went to Millican University and received her BFA in art management degree. She enjoys working with all types of art mediums. She gets inspired by the outdoors and being around friends and family. A lot of her inspiration comes from all those outdoor activities. She created Bottoms Up Herky, Tennis Herky, and Golden Road Herky, and so they're Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> all around the room. She's got three of them there. God bless you. <laughs> Chad and Carol Hageman. Okay, they're down there at the end. Chad and Carol are very excited to participate as artists in their third Herky on Parade. They appreciate the opportunity to use their talents at this level and their regular profession. Each Herky on Parade marks a significant milestone for them as they grew up with their family and moved permanently to Iowa City. They have two boys and they are loyal fans of the Iowa Hawkeyes, as are all of us. They created Herky Wilder and what is it? Work, work Life Balance Herky. So where's, where are those at? Over here? Over there? I guess you're going to have to just look for all these, and that's a one reason to go look at all of them. Jim Kelly. Jim? Jim and April Kelly are Iowa City residents with longtime ties to the Hawkeyes. Jim is a graduate of Northern Illinois University with a degree in sculpture. He's also the owner of Lucky Paws in Iowa City and North Liberty. April is a graduate of the University of Iowa with a degree in studio art and art education and Rockford College where she received her Master of Arts in Teaching. She currently teaches at Liberty High School 
The Kellys have been part of Herky on Parade since its inception in 2004. Thank you for that. They created, for this one, Tooth Fairy Herky, Heartlander Herky, and Ninja Turtle Herky. That's a pretty big assignment. Congratulations on that. Ivy Hendricks, here on the end, Ivy. She was born and raised in Cedar Rapids. She attended Washington High School. That's where I went in a different century. <laughs> where she uh, honed her skills as an artist. After graduation, she attended Kirkwood, then went to Coe College, where she received her BFA in art. She opened her own Etsy shop, where she sells her work. She has also completed several public artworks through the city of Cedar Rapids, including the Overalls All Over Project. In 2015, she had the amazing opportunity to illustrate a children's book for an Iowa author. She has worked as a freelance artist and most recently painted the oversized chairs at Wickiup Hill in Lynn County in 2023. And her piece, I have, I'm not sure which Herky you have. Herky Perspectives, right over there, so you can stop and see that real soon. Madeline Recker. Madeline, she went to the University of Iowa where she studied art, art history, and event planning. She graduated in 2021 and joined Dakota Red in June of 22 as their marketing coordinator. And she created Madeline Herkrete, Herkrete Herky. So all of you have just made an unbelievable contribution to this Herky. Now I'd like to go right on down the line here and just say what, you know, you can take, uh, and share the microphones of course. Tell us, why did you do this? You know, what, what are the, what are the, pro you know, you don't have to answer all these questions. What were your problems in creating a herky or something like that? And what were your greatest benefits? So we'll start right here and just go on down the line. Well, I, I uh, wanted to be a part of this project because I think public art is really important to our community. And after seeing all the people all summer long going and looking for all the herkies, it really brings the community together. And I also saw it as a platform to maybe give a voice to something that um, normally might not have that voice. So my statue perspectives not only shows the wave, which everyone is very used to seeing from the player, the field standpoint, the fan standpoint, but if you look at the back side of mine, I thought I really wanted to show the other side of it. On the other side of the uh, window at the hospital, what the kids see when they look out on the field and how they feel. So I really took this as an opportunity to give a voice to them and it was a really amazing project. I'd say the biggest hurdle that I had was going from rendering this on a flat piece of paper, my idea to a three-dimensional shape. I think that was the biggest, the biggest um, hurdle to do. Is it bad I just went blank? Okay. <laughs> Um, no, I just wanted to be a part of it, and I have three little kids, and we're huge Hawkeye fans. And it's so fun to see the statues and see all the artwork and the creativity that goes into them. Um, also, to see just so much um, community towards it when you see all the little kids checking it out, on top of even adults checking it out. And uh, I just love the fact that I was a part of it, and to have some ideas for it and have be able to bring it to life was like was the most fun that I have had as an artist in a while so it inspired me even more to create and to be a part of the community and um, really I've had a, so much fun um, seeing photos too of people taking pictures with mine it has been like probably the top too, besides my kids taking pictures and wanting to take pictures with them. Um, but that's been so much fun, and I get why the Hurricane Parade is such a big deal, um, and it's just amazing to be a part of it. 
So. so everything, you know, was it so hard to create that you broke your... I broke my hand because of it. broke hand doing it, okay. The I herky just... fell on it. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. And it's the big bubble butt. I felt like the herky this year had a nice bubble butt. And uh, it fell right on this hand. Are you serious? I'm serious. The herky fell on your hand? Totally serious. See, not a bike accident. See, this is a contact a bike profession. Accident. That, uh, this is, uh -huh. this is it was the than, bottoms up. I is, was having too much fun with the bottoms up. This is more dangerous than football. Very dangerous. <laughs> I mean, he's the size of a football player. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You better watch out. Don't get too close. All right, I'm Kelsey. I would say my why is I grew up in Iowa City. We have gone to Hawkeye events ever since I was little. Um, and I thought it would just always be a really cool experience to do. I was also peer pressured into doing it by my friends and family. Um, so I am a teacher. I have two young kids. We are in the middle of wrestling season and birthdays and everything else. Um, I had a lot of reasons to say no to this and it was really cool to get done with it and say it was so hard to do but it was also really rewarding and seeing all of them out here now is just a really cool experience as a university of iowa alumni it was really cool to be part of this project um, i've always loved art ever since i was little my mom was an art teacher so that had a lot of influence over my life um, and so it was fun to just be part of this project um, coming and working on a paper and drawing it out and then having to implement it and get your ideas on a three-dimensional object is definitely the most difficult part, especially building um, like a hat. I had to start from scratch. You didn't just be able, you couldn't um, just sculpt that onto him. He had to, you had to build that externally and then attach it. So that was really difficult, but it was fun to work with all the different mediums and make it come to life. Uh, I decided to get involved in this project after moving to Iowa City, uh, after graduating with an art degree, figuring it was time to do something to show my parents that it was worthwhile to go through college and get an actual art degree. So I saw the call for artists actually on the public access TV uh, station uh, back in 2003 is probably when they were calling for artists. And it sounded like something that uh, would be great up my alley, uh, growing up a Hawkeye fan. Uh, I submitted a number of designs and was very uh, excited to get chosen for those. Um, and then 10 years later did some more and uh, this, this round also uh, was here last year uh, on stage with my wife April as we unveiled the Diamond Herky uh, for 75th birthday party for Herky as well as announcing the, um, uh, the most recent parade that we see out here right now. Um, uh, the biggest challenges I have, I like to build off of uh, the original structure, and so finding ways to attach things that will up, you know, hold up all summer long to people taking pictures, touching them, climbing on them, doing that, um, you know, just trying to make sure that it's safe for everyone and that it, it lasts for that whole parade so everyone can enjoy it. Um, so we're a husband and wife duo team, just like Jim. We've been doing this for, this is our third session. So we started in 2004, 2014, and now again. And I think we kind of felt like we needed to continue on since we had done this so many times. Um, our biggest thing with, with doing this is we love to celebrate the history of what has happened in, at the University of Iowa with some of the different people that have been here. And so um, we did two of them this time, one in, in honor of Ned Ashton, um, 1920s Amer All-American swimmer from the University of Iowa, as well as um, engineer who went ahead and uh, created not only the, the wonderful swimming pool that is in Iowa City that is being taken down at the end of the season, but also a lot of bridges in um, eastern Iowa. Um, and then also Gene Wilder, um, the iconic um, portrait of him as um, Willy Wonka in the original 1971 movie. Gene Wilder being a, a student here under a different name at the time, but um, not quite Gene Wilder then yet. But he uh, is 
huge in the history of what has happened here at the University of Iowa, along with so many other people through the Writers' Workshop. Um, and so we wanted to go ahead and, and commemorate him. And we're a little unique in that we are not artists, um, really at all. We are, I have no education. Um, I was a high school chemistry teacher and I've been teaching at the university for about 15 years now. But we got into this in 2004 with an artist from Cedar Rapids named Tom Newport, who has done many of the Herkies in the past. And so we were very thankful for that. And it's kind of a milestone. If any of you have children that have kind of grown, our very first Herkie that we did in 2004, I was pregnant with our first son. And we went around with a camera. Back then it wasn't digital, we still had film. And we took about 2,000 pictures of different iconic locations around Iowa City and Coralville, of course, Kinnick Stadium, some places downtown. And then we decoupaged like 2,000 little teeny pictures on it. And so we just have always kind of wanted to come full circle with bringing that together. And now that son happens to be going to Japan tomorrow to study abroad, and he's now 20. So it's really been. A, a interesting milestone and we we love to see the creativity that is brought out by everyone um, and we learned this time that you can actually buy authentic Willy Wonka clothing from Europe so that's where a lot of our uh, clothing came we just had to buy extra in really large sizes to fit the physique of, of uh, the Herky this year I, I actually do not have any of that clothing yet, so I'll have to uh, look into look, Willy Wonka. <laughs> now, I think people would like, we'll, we'll start on this end, just, you're the only one that have to answer this, and we'll ask different questions of everybody, but how does this start out? I mean, do you put a drawing on a piece of paper? Do you, do you know what the herpes are going to look like? Or Tell us a little bit about how this how it starts well they helped us out they did give us at least an outline of what Herky would look like again i think for some of us it was a shock at how curvy he was but they, they gave us an outline and i think when i sat down to really think of something that would not only stand out to um, the committee that's choosing the statues ultimately but also the community what's going to resonate with the larger part of the crowd and so um, I sat there for quite a long time and I thought really truly the most um, important thing that I have noticed over the last year um, was truly it was the wave and that's where my idea came from and like I said I wanted to take it a step further and make it deeper than just what we see on national television and at our football games so um, at that point then I, I sat there with my paper and, and pencils and drew out the idea and knew that there would be some tweaking, but you know, it, it gave me a real good ground to start on. Next for you now, why, people say, why did you want to get involved in this? <clears throat> I think being part of a community I mean, I've said that before, but um, just being part of this and, and getting to, to use my art towards the community is the number one thing that I wanted to do and the reason why I joined. And I had a lot of friends at, keep texting me, hey, you got to do it, you got to do it. And I, the last time go around, I missed it. So I was really gun ho on applying for it, and um, I was just lucky enough to get chosen. It looks like it's like about an every six, seven, eight years where there's a herky on parade or ten. Ten. So, uh, you know, hopefully we're all around for the next uh, herky on parade. So, for the next person, how does it, uh, okay, once you draw your piece on paper, where do you send it to a committee and they approve it or do they disapprove? You know, tell us how that goes. So there's a few different options. You can have a sponsor that's already going to buy the Herky. So that was my situation, is that Hills Bank had actually already bought the Herky. They commissioned me to do the artwork. I still had a draw it approved. 
um, and then you had other people that would submit their own artwork and then ask or also be on the approval list. So are there a number of institutions such as Hills Bank that buy a hurricane and they then they look for their place. artists to do what they want? Yeah, I think it's just up to that. Um, the community or the people that are buying it to see what they want to do with it. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, next, what, are, are there? We're, we're staying on the same topic. Are, are there certain hurkies where the committee knows exactly what they want, and they're looking for an artist to do that? Um, so in my case, Hawkeye Ready Mix was my sponsor, and I created a bunch of different designs, and I sat down with um, some coworkers, and we picked out which pieces of each design and we kind of put it together and then from there I created our Hurky design. Did, did you ever, did any of you have a case where you designed something and they said no, that's not going to work? No, nope, they approved mine um, right away. There was a couple of parts of it where they wanted me to make sure uh, that it was attached safely just in case somebody climbed on it or if it was touched, it wouldn't break. But that was the only thing uh, that they said about my design. Okay. Now, what, hap what happens? Okay, she told us about that. What happens next? What's the next? So, yeah, I, uh, with the number that I did, we had some that uh, were commissioned by the sponsor. We also had uh, designs that were chosen. Um, we made sure that, you know, the, the Think Iowa City uh, group did a fantastic job, and they have throughout this whole project, making sure that uh, there's no repeats of the same harkies. They want, they want variety out there so everyone can see different things. They want something that's going to be safe uh, for the environment. There's also licensing restrictions with some subject matters um, to go on the Herky. They want it to, to be respectful of Herky and of the University of Iowa. So you know, all, you know, once that process is done, working with the artist, we have to make sure we um, you know, uphold all those uh, high standards that the University and, and Think Iowa City puts out there for this project. Uh, from there, we pick up a blank turkey uh, statue, and it's kind of up to us to uh, pick out the materials and figure out the best way to apply them, make them um, in the allotted amount of time, and then uh, have them delivered or have them picked up so they can be clear coated to uh, sit outside. Uh, they do an automotive clear coat that's put on them to help um, you know, with the weather and, and sun throughout the summer. Yeah, to the Hackamans, what are they? What do they actually do? Do, do they deliver the hurricanes, for example, to your, uh, uh, how do I say it, your work, your work room, your house, whatever, and so then you for start? For us, it's our house, <laughs> as I'm guessing most of the folks here. Um, actually, like a, garage, a garden garage that we have that was heated, so we put it in there. Um, we actually picked them up ourselves. Um, so we have... Um, how, how, actual, how heavy are they? They're actually only about 50 pounds. They're just very awkward. Um, because of the um, size that he is, um, he's just very awkward to be able to pick up. Um, but they're hollow on the inside, and they're only about 50 pounds. Um, and they come fiberglass, white, um, and we were able to get one in our SUV and then went back and got another one. and. Um, just kind of set them up so that we were ready to go inside the house and, and try to work on them when we could. So apparently, they, but still, they can break bones. <laughs> they can break bones, or they can break as well. Uh, we had one of ours, not this year, but another time, um, where we dropped it when we were bringing it into our house, and he got a big elbow crack, and um, Bondo is like, everybody's best friend when it comes to working with fiberglass so that you can rebuild it back up well, and bad nobody would ever know. So what, so what happens? Can, is it replaceable? Yeah, you can fix, well, I mean, I didn't ask them to replace it. We just fixed it ourselves. Um, I know that Mr. Kelly also had one that had something break off of it at one point, um, but you can use like Bondo, like car Bondo, like when you're repairing a car and um, you can, build up layer after layer, sand it down, and you eventually go ahead and rebuild. Um, a lot of YouTubing, a lot of just trying to trial and error when it comes to doing it. Um, we've always done clothing on ours, um, and Herky is, uh, does not have normal sizes, um, so we 
like for our coat on Willy Wonka, um, we had two four X's that we ordered, um, and then we had to tear them apart and try to re-sew it back together into one coat. Um, so needless to say, they're, they're very unusual sizes. The thighs on him, um, size 60 pants, and um, you still have to tear it apart to be able to get it wrapped around and then try to re-sew it and, and use a lot of different types of glue. And um, there's a special product that you can put over top of fabric so that it becomes really hard. Um, I guess that, that was part of our process that we did. Uh, the materials you use, do you need a special material for the, you know, for the product that you get? The, uh, what's kind of nice is that the artists that have done previous Perkies have kind of compi compiled a list of materials that they've used. And so, you know, we've all kind of worked together and uh, different things that work best for us for the clothing to make it hardened. And we were able to order most of our materials. Um, the wigs on both of our Herkies just happened to be, how many of you, seven, five? Herky Wilder is just five wigs cut up and fit on his head. And um, so we just kind of get creative. And if something doesn't work, we have to kind of scrap it and try something else, I think is probably what everyone does. So um, we think about it in advance. And then sometimes we have to have a plan B for certain things. We'd like to remind everybody also at this time that over here to my right is the National Championship women's wrestling team from the University of Iowa, along with, let's hear it for them, along with Kennedy Blades, the silver medalist from the Paris Olympics. She's also on that team, and uh, she's signing autographs for everybody there, so uh, everybody get in line. It looks like there's a pretty good pretty good line already. Now, back to the Herkies, there are some of these, and, and I don't know if it's yours, any of yours exactly, that are unbelievably ornate. Like, like I, I saw one out there, it must have a, two or 3,000 bottle caps on it. And uh, just unbelievably in, impressive. So with that in mind, I, I wanted, you know, you can start at that end this time. Tell me, what were the biggest hardships you had, and how how tough is it doing stuff like what I just talked about with the, with these bottle caps? That's got to be unbelievable. For us, when we did this in 2004, we were 30. Pretty easy to crawl around on the floor of our uh, cold cement floor. The next one was 40. This time, we would both be sitting on the ground and we see the scissors over there and we'd say, you're gonna get the scissors? No, you're gonna get the scissors. <laughs> so it, um, we have evolved ourselves and it's kind of funny to have that um, to go back to. It was, it was quite different, so we'll see what's gonna happen in 10 years. Um, we, we were still able to do it and, and we, we managed, but that cement floor felt a little different this time than it did 20 years ago. Um, other than that, I think is, is for us is maybe predicting how long things are going to take. Uh, we were very lucky this time to have a heated garage that we were able to keep them in. Uh, but even this time we still had some space heaters. You don't know how long it's going to take the glue to dry. For us, it was a little cold um, in a different garage last time. And so we were out there with hair dryers trying to get everything to glue. So you just kind of roll with it. I think that that's what makes it good and what makes good memories for everyone. What do you think of the new wrestling facility? You know, I don't have a lot to add to that other than just, yes, it's definitely a lot more time consuming than you think. Um, it takes a lot of hours, as I'm sure everybody down the row would go ahead and say, whether you're painting or you're decoupaging or you're um, building something to add on to it as an accessory, um, every piece and part of it just takes a lot more time than you think. 
Um, but the end result is always worth it, even though you stay up the night before they pick it up or you have to deliver it. So, well, you really don't go to bed that night. But, um, and so you're, you're thankful when it's done and excited for the, the chance to see it out in public. And as somebody else mentioned earlier, um, I work in the school system and I had somebody recently just send me pictures. Their kids went to all 101 of them um, and she sent me pictures of the ones that we had done and needless to say, they, they loved Lollipop. They named it Lollipop Herky um, as opposed to Willy Wonka or Herky Wilder. Um, so like with the, like saying that, like the Willy Wonka piece, you can't actually call it that. It has to be called Herky Wilder because of the um, copyrights um, and those types of things. But, but getting that feedback from people is probably the most rewarding aspect. Uh, I would definitely agree that uh, some of the biggest challenges are time management working on these projects. Both my wife and I uh, have other full-time jobs as well as children, so trying to coordinate time to, to work in our home, which allows us to, to work once, once the kids go to bed. Um, and then usually at, at our age we, we would want to go to bed before our kids do, but you know, put them to bed and then go work on Herky uh, many, many nights over the, the months leading up to the, the deadline. Um, most artists, myself, my wife included, would probably say that uh, deadline is important because you'll keep working on a project like this up until that deadline no matter what. You're never quite pleased with it. You're, you're always picking apart your own work and thinking that I can do a little bit extra, uh, add a little bit more detail here, um, and, and do that. So having having those deadlines in place definitely says, okay, it's got to be done. And and I know we worked right up until the very end on, on all the hurricanes that we did. Um, my wife, April, uh, can't be here tonight. She is the Liberty High School art teacher. So she uh, had school today working with those students. The Liberty um, Art Club also did a hurricane, which is right at the entrance as you came in, the, the purple one with the cape. And so she worked with those students uh, as the art club coordinator to help them stay on track. Uh, a lot of changes were made to that as they all tried to coordinate together to come up with their design and to work together to get it done, figuring out how to use materials. Uh, didn't always work out the same. Sometimes uh, people would come home with their hands covered in spray foam or paint uh, as she was trying to, to help show, show all the kids how to use a material that they are not familiar with. So. Uh, one of the most difficult things uh, for me was building um, something externally and then attaching it like our hat um, but it was a lot of fun to work with all the different materials uh, I tried to use spray foam I tried to use some paper uh, paper clay stuff uh, I just used plaster to make a mold it was fun to work with all the different materials and then finally and of course you're always going to pick yourself apart but finally it uh, came together and I was really pleased with it um, it was fun to add all the details like the belt and uh, details onto the pants, like pockets and stitching. Um, so I was really happy with that. All, all of you must be, will come to you on that. Unbelievably proud though, when you go, go by your turkey here and see so many people admiring it and know that your work, you know, was well appreciated. So go ahead. I would say I'd agree with the end here that um, when I signed up for it, I think it was about 60 degrees out, and when I picked him up, it was snowing. So I went from, the plan was to have him in my garage, and he moved into my living room onto some tables, so our couches moved out of the way. So he was a very big part of our entire life for two months. That was uh, a lovely place to live, because ours is uh, stained glass, so we were having glass in our living area the whole time. Um, mine was, we, I had about two months to work on them and we did 262 hours on them. So it was definitely a uh, push to get going between work and wrestling and kids and family. Um, so that was probably my biggest struggle is just that time management and the location with the weather having to be in the house now. I'm sure it's all different, but how many hours do you figure goes into each turkey? I stopped counting. That's what? I stopped counting. <laughs> I actually started counting how many coffees I had and over how many hours I, I had into the herky. No, mine was the bottle cap one. I had all the little bottle caps, so I realized I've never done a 3D, you know, statue before, but I've done, you know, 2D, and 
Um, I'm more of a painter and I do wood burning and so that was just a unique way to approach bottle caps and I remember talking to um, Josh who runs it and he's like can you do a, a bottle cap one I'm like let me see how many I have and so I reached out to all my friends I'm like please start drinking coca-cola the old school kind um, I went to bars I went everywhere to find extra caps to bring the color that I wanted to the herky um, and then I realized how awkward he is rolling him in my office. I was like rolling him to the side, stacking up books, doing you know all different kinds of uh, ways to you, you know be able to put the caps on the side of his leg, on, you know all all over him. He's definitely there's a lot of surface there. Um, and then the glue, the glue because it was in February, so it was cold and you didn't want to put him in the garage. So I had my window open in the office, the door closed at 9.30 at night, and uh, you know, I'd have a protection over a mask, and I'd have this really strong glue just blowing out. So I can only imagine what my neighbors thought as they saw a herky in the window in the middle of February as snow was going, because there was snow, and me with a mask on, and, me, and then looking, putting the little caps on them and hoping that they stayed. So it took a lot longer than I expected, but it was it was really fun to see the end result. But then also I didn't want to look at him anymore. So there was a time where I was like, no, he's not done, but I can't look at him anymore. Nope, maybe maybe the herky's done. Nope, nope, he's not. I got a little bit more to do, and it was the time of uh, the time crunch that really uh, made me realize, okay, he's done. I'm done looking at him, and I'll look at him when he's out there in public. So. It was a love-hate, and I don't know how you felt about it. I loved them and I hate it. <laughs> now I love it. <laughs> so I'll, I'll uh, agree with that. It, it does turn into a love-hate, but I will say I always start my projects with trying to keep track of the time. When I hit 100 hours, though, I kind of lost track. And um, I'd say the biggest hurdle with it was exactly that in my head. In a perfect world, I think, oh, I can do this in this amount of time, and it ends up being more and more. And when I picked up Perky, I had the best intentions on having him in the garage, but I soon quickly realized that I would much be more comfortable in the house painting him during the winter. So he ended up in our dining room, so mine is completely hand-painted. 360 degrees, lots of details, so I spent many, many, many hours shimmying Perky back and forth in the dining room to twist him around and turn him around and lay on the floor and look up and make sure I get all the angles covered and walk back and check him from a distance to make sure that it looks good if you're approaching him and if you are up close with him and you can see all the details so yeah now you can answer this one when you're done can you keep the Herky that you created if you want or is there a cost or well, my husband really wanted to keep ours, but um, no, uh, we did not keep it. I don't know if you have that option. I don't believe you do. Mine was sponsored by the airport. Um, it went out to the airport for the unveiling, and I know at this point right now they have a select, um, is it 10 or 20? 20, 10, 10, I think 20 perkies that are on the auction block to be able to own. No. You can, you can just shake your heads, yes or no, but do you receive anything for doing this? You, are, you, are you paid, I guess is what I'm saying. You are? Okay. No, that, that's satisfactory. You're, that, that's good. And, and so at the end, have, have any of you kept your own herpes or bought your own herpes? So you don't have them in your front yard or anything? Okay. Just, my business did sponsor one back in 2014. It's a hurt dog. We have that sitting out inside of our Iowa City um, Lucky Puzz location. So I was the artist as well as the sponsor for that one. Okay, we're, we'll start. Go ahead. Um, our business, Hawkeye Ready Mix, bought ours. So ours will actually be on display at our plant here in Coralville. Well, it, it, we wondered because I understand that the uh, Perky with the 22 on it is going to the... <clears throat> Caitlin Clark family, and the wrestling one will be outside of wrestling probably, but uh, now, you, uh, we've heard a lot about the good, 
in her case, have any of you had what you'd call a real negative e experience uh, uh, th that isn't nasty that you can uh, go beside your arm, yeah, that uh, that you had in, uh, you know, start, start in the middle there the, with, with the herky, stuff you'd like to forget. Uh, during the first Hurricane Parade, uh, one of the ones I did was American Gothic Turkey. Uh, I was holding a pitchfork, and unfortunately, a uh, rambunctious student after the bar closed hours decided to, to hang on the arm. The arm broke off, and so I ended up repairing that, having to cast a new arm and, and reattach it. Um, it was so after being done with the project, having to redo part of a project is, is kind of a difficult thing to do. Uh, we also, uh, April and I also had to do some repairs to Herky of the Corn in the 2014 Herky on parade um, as some weather damage. Uh, they, they wanted to keep it outdoors over time, and so we had to redo that a couple times to make it withstand the elements. So spending all the time doing a project and then having to redo something, I think that's probably the, the hardest thing to do is, is having to do something all over again. It, it sounds like there's very, very few, if any, uh, uh, negatives. Now, down at the end, what when you paint, are we talking just regular paint, or what do you, you know, what? How about the supplies that go into to making it? So we haven't used a lot of paint on ours. I start by going ahead and using paint, and I'm trying to even think of what type of paint I use, but I use like a a gel medium to kind of make it a little bit smoother and glossier, um, just to put a lot of coats on so that you don't see any brush strokes. Um, but most of ours, we're kind of old school. We, um, back in 2004, a lot of them were done um, with uh, fabric and cloth and clothing. Uh, now I think that this most recent one, a lot of things were either um, just built up and then painted to make it look like the clothing was actually there. Um, we stuck with the old-fashioned way of using real cloth and real clothes. Um, but uh, so I, I, somebody else might be able to answer the painting piece a little better. And if you you know with the paint, is it regular paint to use? Well, they suggest something that holds up and withstands to Iowa weather. Um, at the time, they do provide a really nice, uh, some resources to give you some ideas of um, product to use, uh, materials to use. But at the time, I knew that the airport had sponsored mine, but I did not know if it was going to be inside or outside. So um, despite my preference for using a certain kind of paint and what I typically use in my art, I did switch to a different brand a mural paint that is um, perfectly usable for murals outside, just so I have that durability in case. And next, do you get, when you receive your herky, you've already given them your plan for what you're going to do. It, over, over there we see a, a just kind of a pale yellow one. How do you get your herky? Is it just all white styrofoam like? Yeah, it's all white and I assume they put like a paint on there, like a gesso to begin with, but I put a layer of gesso on there, um, at least three layers before I then paint it on it. My, um, I have a bike path one uh, that I did. That was my first one I did, and um, I went to the um, art store at Blix um, in Iowa City, and they gave me a lot of recommendations for, you know, outside with the sun exposure. And I'm I'm really surprised with this weather we had this summer. We had a lot of rain, we had a lot of sun, we had a lot of heat, and um, you know, even on the bottle cap one, the fading on uh, some of the caps, like especially the red ones, turned to a light pink to white almost. Um, so you realize how much the weather can damage something like that. So, um, you know, getting advice and reading up on the email that we had on what paint works best was what I really focused on. Um, on top of, you know, once we give the herky to, um, you know, give them back, they put a nice lacquer on that. And, you know, I really relied on that as well was that nice lacquer that they put on to keep the shine, hold the paint, and everything else with it. Let me ask uh, Jackson wh what he thinks of Herky. So my mom got Herky on, and... Um, my mom got 
a herky arm? He, he was trying to say what was bad about herky is that when we were doing herky, piecing it all on, doing this motion with the glass and getting it all on, I ended up hurting my muscle right here and the kids refer to it as herky arm now. So he's, he says that's the bad part is I got herky arm. Seems like it's a problem with the right arm for everybody with herky. Yeah, that, uh, uh, would all of you, uh, okay, you've done it. Down there, you've done more than once, you know, for the herkies. Uh, would you all do it again? You know, go ahead and start at that end. Yes, although we can do the math, um, and so we'll just have to see how things are going then. Um, I think that we would definitely be interested in doing it again, yes. I, I think if I'm around in 10 years, you're going to be around too. So that's, that's true. A, that's true. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm hoping we're still around, um, and we definitely would be willing to do them again. You know, it's I've never given birth to a child, but most women would say after they've had that first one, okay, I don't want to have another one. And then, you know, you give yourself a little bit of time and you're willing to go back to the whole process again and, and have another child. Um, we're fortunate enough to have two children, so she did say yes on that. But um, it's kind of like that, guys. I, I feel like you give it some time and you kind of forget some of the, the hard hardships that go along with it. And I, and I don't know if any of you know this, Herky on Parade kind of originated, and I don't remember exactly what it was, but Chicago had some cows, cows, they cows on parade or something in 2003 or four or something, and that's where the idea came from to have Herkies on parade. So we can we can attribute that to uh, the Windy City there. Uh, so anyway, all of you, would, would you continue doing it again, you think, in the, you know, God willing, in 10 years from now? Most likely I would, I would uh, be willing to do it again. It's fun being part of the community projects, uh, and, and spacing it out every 10 years gives you a good, good chance to kind of forget about uh, all the extra work that goes into it, uh, and you remember most of the good things. Uh, ten years from now, uh, we shouldn't have any more children in the house, so there should be a little more free time involved uh, to be able to do some of these projects. Um, but uh, Iowa City community is great doing these projects. They also put on the Book March project, which is a similar thing to the um, Hurricane Parade, the fiberglass sculptures of books. Uh, and my wife and I participated in that. And that was, uh, I don't know, a dozen years ago. Um, but uh, it's nice being involved in those community projects and seeing everyone enjoying everything all over town. I definitely would. Um, I learned a lot from doing this project, so I think I could implement it for the next time. Now, let me, let me start with a different uh, question with you. You, I assume all of you have been around the room looking at the Herkies since uh, you have so much invested in it. What was all your, uh, you know, do you have a personal favorite? Other, other than the one that you did, probably. Did you have, have any that just caught your eye or anything? I mean, I'm very biased because my friend did three of them, so I really like all of her three because they're always, all very different also. Um, we always said that we trauma bonded over her key also, so we were messaging each other constantly saying like, hey, is this working? Is this working? What are you doing here? Um, so that was a really nice bonding experience for us too. Do you have a favorite one? Probably the fishing one. He likes the fishing one. That sounds Which, good. That one is also done by another art teacher, so. We did have a lot of talks. I'm like, you got this. You're almost done. <laughs> um, no, I, I agree. I love Kelsey's as well, because um, you just know the hours that you put into it, and you look at it even more with appreciation of, you know, the artist. So that definitely Kelsey's one. I kind of have three. The butter one is phenomenal. Can't believe the butter one. And uh, and then the last one is the prairie one. Uh, the artwork on that, the detail of the artist for her painting abilities is 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 beautiful. So those three are, are my favorites. I second the prairie one. Uh, forgive me, I don't remember the exact name of it, but truly the. Um, 
painting on it is absolutely exquisite, and I can't imagine how many hours it took, but the color is beautiful, so definitely check, check them all out, but that one's my favorite. Go ahead. Um, I really like the American Needs Farmers one um, with all the corn and the beans on it. I can't imagine how long that took her to glue them all on. As a sculpture major, I think my favorite is the Optimus Prime Herky. Uh, when I, I, I saw the drawing of that one before it was made, and that was the one I was most looking forward to seeing. And um, the artist did a fantastic job just constructing and, and uh, making it look just like Optimus Prime, but keeping keeping the uh, the spirit of Herky alive with it. I actually don't know if I personally have a favorite, um, but I think one of my favorite things is that every time I look at them, I notice something new on all of them. I, I think that, oh, we've seen them, we've looked at them, and then you go back and you look and you're like, oh my gosh, how did they do that? Or uh, that had to take so much work, and I can just appreciate that about all the herkies. But we would we would second the, um, the butter herky. Uh, that was... I couldn't believe that somebody hadn't come up with that idea before, um, and just the whole concept. It, it looks so simple, but yet the putting of 60 plus pounds of, of clay on um, scraping it, buttering it onto it to give it that texture, um, it's, it's really, it really stands out in my mind. Now, <clears throat> what you folks do and what all of the artists do here have my up utmost respect because this comes from a person who doesn't even want to paint a yardstick. I do no painting at home and I, I have the utmost respect for all you do and I think everybody out there will join me in thanking these folks for what they do and what all the Herky artists do and we thank you for being with us today and for your insights into everything and you too Jackson. Thank you all for coming.